source of worry and concern to the people and government of the state. Therefore, in order to deal decisively with the situation in our respective communities, Zamfara State Government has no option than to take the following measures. One, government has henceforth directed individuals to prepare and obtain local weapons to defend themselves against the bandits. Although there is an existing law that ban uh, issuance of license to obtain such weapons, people wishing to obtain uh, the weapon are advised to fill forms that will be distributed to each of the 19 Emirates of the state, and enough number of such forms has so far been provided for distribution to people wishing to obtain lawful, lawful weapons that will be used in defending themselves. So that is what we're going to start up with here today. We'd like to hear from uh, Zamfara State, uh, Commissioner, who made that statement to see, uh, because already, of course, you expect lots of reactions, mixed ones, as the ladies like to describe them, concerning that directive for residents. And you see, what, 9,500-odd licenses this year being prepared for it. So um, it's going to be quite, quite interesting. It is already getting interesting. Remember that uh, member of the House of Representatives on the floor of the House uh -huh. that said you know, he would ad admonish or advocate that Nigerians should defend themselves, get guns or weapons or whatever to defend themselves, of course. Uh, and you also saw that one on the front that said sophisticated weapons to defend you know, themselves you know, in the Southwest and the questions. And you said, well, the devil is in the details. Yeah, um, because the thing is, we know, I think we it might be safe for me to say we all, if I could commit that fallacy, sweeping generalization, which mm. could be right in this case. I mean, it's, it's not like when we say we the people. This is saying <laughs> we all know that we have a security challenge oh, yeah. on our hands. Mm. But how do we address it seems to be where there are dissenting voices, mm. where we all don't seem to agree. But there is a challenge and mm. we need to address it. So perhaps Zanfara will let us know. Mm. Uh, you know, perhaps the backstory, what informs this, if you know some of them already, you may, and then how the reactions, how they're coping with some of these things, and several other questions, and the wider implication. And that honorable gentleman you spoke about, yeah. we will hear from him as well. Mm. So, it, it, uh, it's, it's, it will be very interesting to find out exactly the how, because mm -hmm. without engaging the people in the process, we are literally what you call sitting ducks. Mm. And we just, it's, a lot, it comes with a lot of caution. There are those yeah. who are saying it's illegal and all of that. So I'm, like you, would be looking forward to an interesting yeah. conversation. So for now, we will get to hear from Zanfara. So don't worry about that. You might have it a little bit, but we'll hear a little bit more. Uh, but in the meantime, perhaps we should just go over to Abuja. We've got some uh, guests there who will speak on the same subject matter. Mark where? Indeed, Abuja coming in with the source this morning. <laughs> It's a very serious matter. That's what we're discussing. A matter of life and death. And we have two gentlemen to weigh in on the issue. Barrister Ibrahim Jibril Gusso is a member of the PDP. You're welcome to Sunrise Early this morning. And I'm uh, pleased to, to be here this morning. Thank you for coming. Honorable Adejoro Adeogo is the Deputy Chairman, House Committee on National Security and Intelligence. And he's now hidden where he stands on where, whether or not citizens should be able to obtain arms. You're welcome to the program this morning. Thanks for having me. I was about to say, is this some sort of validation for you? The fact that the Zamfara State Government is now asking the citizens to go and obtain licenses and purchase arms. Well, I mean, we need to, you know, to come to this someday, and it's come. So we should have taken action much earlier and um, tried to set a process, put a process in place so that, you know, legitimate citizens, people who have, um, who can prove to the security agencies that they're genuine, that they, you know, can be trusted with weapons, are allowed access to weaponry. But right now, you know, what the Zamfara State government has done is more like 
coming home to understand that at the end of the day, citizens should be given a right to defend themselves. But because it's a panic action now, um, it may be difficult for um, you know those who should take the action to be able to take the action in good you know in good time for it to be effective. Mm. So you consider this a panic action? Yes, I think it is. Okay. Um, I do not know how this is, Hichi Barrister. Um, did it come to you as a surprise? Um, the state government asking the citizens to get license and obtain, um, be able to obtain arms to defend themselves. This is not the first time, though, that we're hearing a governor ask his citizens to defend themselves. But this is the first time we're, we're hearing a government asking citizens to obtain, actively obtain licenses um, and get ready to defend themselves. How did this come to you? It's a root shock. Root shock in the sense that it's a, what the governor is trying to do will only amount to anarchy in Zamfara State. I, as, a, as an indigenous of Zamfara State, I am touched by what is happening in Zamfara State because some of my families I involved will have lost the lo I've lost loved ones in the past. And uh, recently, about 29 of our youths were kidnapped on their way from Sokto to attend a wedding. They had to contribute money amongst themselves. And the current gubernatorial candidate of aspirant of PDP in Zanfra State had to support them to ensure those who were kidnapped were freed. The governor has been very nonchalant about this issue a long time ago. And... Um, I'm surprised that this is his calling for indigents of Zamfara in a state where there is abject poverty, in a state where there is high level of illiteracy. It is surprising that the governor will be calling for people of the state to arm themselves. It is purely a call for anarchy. He can emulate what the governors on the Southwest did by establishing a security outfit, get a license for this outfit, and ensure these people go there in the, in the forest and, put, and engage the bandits. Um, in Zamfara State, we know these bandits, we know their parents, we know their grandparents. We know how to get across to them. The governor once invited one of the notorious bandits called Turji, to the, governor, to, the, to, the, to the government house. He gave him money, he gave him vehicle. What was he doing? Empowering the, the bandit even more. By the provision of Section 14B of the, of the Constitution, it is the responsibility of the government to provide security to the life and properties of the people. For him to now say, I can't do it, you should arm yourself shows that the governor has failed. Mm. I think that is my take. You know, there are those who have said, I mean, a number of reactions have greeted this particular, um, this particular decision, as can be expected. You've just heard one of them uh, coming from Zamfara State. You have also said uh, that you consider this a panic action. Uh, but part of, uh, for some people, it's more fundamental than that. They believe that, as he's just pointed out, that if government exists to protect the uh, security of lives and property, and the fundamental uh, job of government is security of lives and property, they believe that what the Zamfara state government has done is, um, is raised up, is, is surrendered, more or less, to the bandits, and it's outsourcing its own responsibility to the people of Zamfara state. Do you read it that way? I think beyond the politics of PDP, APC that my brother here tried to play, we need to understand that um, Governor Matawali was originally in PDP. And while he was in PDP, the first thing he did was, like he said, decided he would engage the militants, the bandits. He engaged them, invited them, tried to see if he could do things. So you could see he's been trying this. But the, the real issue is we actually don't have um, what I call doctrines for dealing with issues in Nigeria. 
there should be a standard operating procedure for everybody. You know that where you have issues of terrorism, this is the way it's done. But what is happening in Nigeria is that it's trial and error. One person is trying this here, one person is trying that here. So we really don't seem to have a central control to undo issues of terrorism. Because it's terrorism in Zafari, it's terrorism in the South, there you have issues of terrorism everywhere. You can't have different standards in all these places. Mm. And unfortunately, um, you know, the police is unable to cope because um, they don't have the numbers, they don't have the weaponry, they don't have the training. And then um, what we've been trying to do all this while is to see if we could raise the level of the police and then security agencies at least to be able to improve on issues of um, early warning intelligence, which has failed us here. So if we're able to get enough early warning intelligence, at least the police will be able to act and then we'll be able to support them. We're not getting that. So what you have in that situation is that governors now start trying, like, can they be even like mechanics? They try this, try that, they do that. These guys are not trained for this purpose. Well, this is part of what they're doing. I mean, they're trying just one more thing. This is another thing in a mix. Yeah. Now, you have interpreted a lot of what he said from the from the prism or from the bias that he is of the PDP, and perhaps this is some APC PDP politics. But those whom I have quoted to you, I mean, because I read some reaction over the weekend, are ordinary citizens of Zamfara who are educated enough to know that you know, this could have implications for the future. And they are also very versed in what the Constitution says about what the responsibility of government is. So they say that is this some attempt to outsource uh, you know, the, 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 the crux, the, the, the main purpose of government, that if government has outsourced everything, I mean, you are your own, uh, you provide your own water, your own electricity, then you have to provide your own security as well by getting guns. Is that what government is saying? No, no, no. You see, basically, you know, drawing attention to the um, political slant is that the error started from when the man was even in PDP. The moment you start engaging bandits, you're asking them, to provide them tools for them to expand their scope. That's what he did. He made that error. So I'm saying that his error is not because of his political party. His error is that he does not have the skill to handle what the responsibility has been given. No, to. the error I'm pointing out, I mean, not the error, but the bias I'm pointing out, so the, you're not quite answering my question, which is whether when government asks people, citizens, to get arms, is it outsourcing its fundamental responsibility to the people, which is uh, saying, look, people, I cannot protect you. Please, by all means, go and get your guns and get ready to protect yourself. But that's the obvious, is is that's that what the government is thing. saying? You see, government has failed. What, it, what basically happened, Zabra State government basically told the whole world, we cannot protect you, protect yourself. But do citizens have a right to protect themselves? They do. And that's why I clamor for citizens to have the right to have access to legitimate weapons, not illicit weapons. Mm. So in that case, should we still have a government? Those are the questions that people are asking. If, if this is in, can be interpreted as that, I mean, if this can be said to be government saying, look, we cannot protect you anymore, what legitimate right does government have to say there's still government? What is the alternative to having a government, having anarchy? Are we asking that we should have um, Somalia on our hands? You see, government is a necessity. Good governance is a necessity. We may not have what we want, but then we don't look at the fact that, okay, because we're not where we should be, we should go backward. We need government, we need good governance. There's gonna be an election in 2023. Nigerians will have a right to choose good governance. I think we need to look at it from that perspective. Do we think there's going to be magic overnight? There won't be because things are pretty bad. They're very, very bad. Mm. But then it will take a long time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be solved in 2023. It won't be solved in 2024. The errors were made in the past in that we did not take action when we should take action. We see right now are not even making efforts to ensure that we deliver on delivering um, early warning intelligence to at least help the security agencies to get their jobs done. Let's go to Lagos now. I know that there's another, we have a few more guests on Zoom and I know that my colleagues have questions for you. Gentlemen. Well, yes, we've got uh, Ibrahim Dosara, who is the Commissioner for Information, Zamfara says he joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. Well, it is that directive that the state has taken that is raising a lot of concern. So could you tell us how did the state arrive at this point? Okay, um, thank you and good morning. 
the issue of uh, directive uh, became necessary to the government of Zamfara State. Uh, what we are doing is uh, to give the protection uh, to lives and property of people, which is the basic function of government. Uh, we have been trying uh, so many ways and processes to ensure that uh, people are secured. Uh, if people uh, could remember at the early stage of this government, uh, like uh, many of uh, the people who spoke earlier said, we engaged the bandit in a dialogue uh, where we had very huge success. Uh, Zamfara State was uh, over nine months without an incident of insecurity, uh, not until when conflict entrepreneurs came in to sabotage that process and scuttle the success we had. And uh, the governor, uh, being uh, somebody who is on top of uh, issues concerning security, who has the security of lives and uh, of people uh, at his heart, also gave the bandits uh, ultimatum of six months within which to embrace the peace process. And uh, when they refused, the governor embarked again on a larger scale of uh, fight against the bandit where he uh, uh, ordered for shutting down communications. He all, also closed down markets, roads, and uh, restricted uh, vehicular movements, uh, a process that also helped in reducing the scale of armed banditry in the state. If people could recall, before he came on board as the governor of the state, he met very, very ugly situation where almost uh, 200 people, 100 people, uh, 100 uh, people are being killed on daily basis. But today, the story has been changed. Uh, we have. Uh, Mr. Dosara, before you progress, I mean, well, concerning how the state got to this point, Mr. Gusau lays the blame squarely at the feet of the government, saying uh, mistakes were made. You. The government engaged those people in the first place. You invited them to government house. You know their families. You know the members. And so coming up with this is a bit of a surprise because there are several other options perhaps he suggests that could have been taken as opposed to saying, all right, go get guns because they wonder, what happened to equipping the police to ensure that uh, they are capable to rout those people? If you know the people, you know them, why this method? You see, forget about Gusau. Uh, he is politicizing security, which uh, we shouldn't uh, mind. We don't mind about Gusau. He was even suggesting that uh, we set up a structure of uh, security forces that can fight this. We invite him and challenge him to come and be the commandant general. We have such a structure on ground. If he is truly uh, having some for security at hand, let him come and be the commandant general to do this. But all we have been doing is to ensure that we explore a uh, uh, reliable source of or rather process of bringing security to the people. So um, like you mentioned, that why don't we empower police or do whatever? You know, security is in the hands of the federal government. What Zamfara State or other gov state governments are doing is to complement the efforts of the federal government in providing security. And you know, security is not just the responsibility of government. Everybody has a responsibility the, to- I beg your pardon, Honorable Dasara and Mr. Dasara. You know, the, the thing about that is, Concerning the police and empowering the police, yes, we know the responsibilities of government when it comes to security, but if the police is not capable, if they don't have that capacity to rein these people in, what gives you the guarantee that when you then arm, assuming there were 9,500, as the report said that you're preparing licenses for 9,500 people, how do you then think that if these men go rogue, you can then handle them? No. You see, uh, the process that we set in is a clean process. We, we started by saying, let people wishing to obtain legitimate uh, weapons uh, come to fill the forms. They are to be 
scrutinized and screened at their localities by their traditional rulers to ensure that uh, no wrong hand or somebody with criminal records uh, are given the license to obtain a gun. And don't forget, uh, only two people are allowed to issue license uh, on the basis of a qualification, the Mr. President and then the Inspector General of Police. And what we said is when we fill these forms, we take them to the Commissioner of Police to do his own investigations and also screen the people before he forwarded to um, uh, uh, Inspector General of Police, who will then finally consider approving and giving the license. So what we are doing, we are following legitimate process to make sure that our people are given the legitimate weapons to protect themselves. Okay. Uh, don't forget, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, we took this uh, decision because uh, the rainy season has commenced and the farmers want to go back to their farms to okay. produce food for people, for food security in the community and in the nation. Mm. And also, uh, following recent upsurge in some parts of the state where the uh, criminals have been attacking people uh, almost on a daily basis. Well, Mr. Desara, we on that, just a quick one on that. Uh, if you can, you know, take yes. us through a little further on the process. Me, there are a number of issues. Me. Just just one second. There are a number of issues that uh, Mr. Guso has raised, which I would love for you to respond to before we go back to him. But tell us more about the process of people securing you know, guns, the legitimacy of it, because there are those who are asking questions as to whether or not it is legal for anyone to get guns in any part of Nigeria for themselves. Uh, take us through the legitimacy of that. Uh, take us through the, the agencies of government, whether federal or state, that have to go, th that people who want to secure guns legitimately have to go through. I understand, for instance, that f for you to be able to get that done, your mental state has to be in place, and then there needs to be some kind of background check on you to be sure that you have no connection with people who have already, as Jimmelin said, gone rogue. Take us through that process. Yes, like I told you, um, we, we are not giving guns or planning to give guns to anybody, but we are planning to give, uh, I mean, position to people to protect themselves because uh, it is allowed in a situation like a more war like, you understand? Our situation is like a more, uh, more uh, war like situation in Zamfara State. And like I told you, we have five local governments where uh, this issue is becoming uh, deteriorating. And it is the reason why we said, okay, since um, we have tried so many ways uh, to curtail this insecurity, uh, some are being sabotaged by complex entrepreneurs. Okay, the best option now is to allow people to uh, defend themselves, especially in their farms, um, because uh, it is rainy season, like I mentioned earlier, and the people need to go back to uh, provide food for their families. Our government has been doing everything uh, to ensure that um, uh, it's kill lives of people and their property. Right. And on the process we're talking about, uh, the, like I said, the Nigerian Constitution says only two people can grant license to obtain legitimate uh, weapons in Nigeria. That is Mr. President and the Inspector General of Police. And the noun that we have an existing ban on the issuance of license to obtain or to possess uh, legitimate weapons. All right. Uh, we are in consultation uh, with the presidency and the high security commands in Nigeria to ensure that uh, permission is given to the IGP to issue license to qualify people of Zamfara State who wants to possess weapons to defend themselves. And this All right, is Mr. what I say. Okay, uh, See, just a minute. Wrong. You'll talk more in just a moment. Don't worry. Just hang on a minute. We'll let you talk a little bit further. But we need to get to Mr. Gusso and, and get a response from him. So, uh, Mr. Gusso, he says, look, desperate times require desperate measures. What is wrong in people protecting themselves? Sure. My take is there's nothing wrong in people protecting themselves. 
But my fear is knowing the terrain of a state like Zamfara with high level of illiteracy and high level of poverty. Uh, the Honorable Commissioner Ibrahim Dusara talks about trying to get responsible people in the state who are going to be given license to arm themselves. My question is, where do these local farmers get the money to purchase these ammunition we are talking about? Who is going to provide the money for them? That is, that is my, my take. It is, not about, it is not an issue of politics. It is an issue of trying to do the right thing for our home state. I am from Zamfara. I can't just pick up my car and travel down home because anything could happen along the way. Just recently, some group of boys, men, who went to Sokoto. Sokoto is, just, is, is a two hours drive from, from Gusau, the state capital. But they were kidnapped. And the government pretend as if nothing is happening. These people had to contribute money to get their freedom. Mr. Gusau, my take is we have prominent Zamfara indigenous uh -huh. who are retired police officers, uh -huh. army generals. Why can't the state government call them together and have think of a lasting solution to this problem? All right, so co con concerning your first people, point, where you say... That is my, my concern. Concerning the first part, where you say, where will they get money to procure these arms? Does that mean, assuming they get funds to procure the arms, will that then justify this directive? I don't think so. I don't think so. so My take is, yeah. why can't the government set up a security agency and purchase legitimate arm for them? Let them go and fight these people. You can't give, you can't, you can't give arms to people, and you expect to, you, you, you and you don't expect. Uh, to be an, you, uh, you, you, you should say there won't be anarchy in the state. It's not possible. These are people who are very on land. There's high, lit, high, high rate of illiteracy in the state. That is my concern. Okay. Honorable, uh, let me ask you, you know, what your take is on this you know, conversation that we are having. Because, as he said, the concerns are most certainly there, you know, facing us squarely. Um, high level of illiteracy, high level of uh, uh, poverty, a high level of unemployment. And the question, you know, Chamberlain asked the other time about the parameters for getting uh, these people, or rather permitting some people, uh, needs to be clear. So I'm wondering what your take is on the process. You're a lawmaker, so you probably have an idea of how these things should be done because there are questions as to the process. You would remember, of course, that just recently, not too long ago, the U.S. had to, the entire nation had to review their own gun laws and all of that. So one is wondering, how will that play out for a first-timer nation as Nigeria in this kind of space? Well, I think I need for us to separate two things. The issue of right and access to weaponry by um, law-abiding citizens and then the issues in Zamfara and the issues of insecurity in Nigeria. I think I need us to separate that. I advocate for Nigerians to have the right to bear weapons, but Zamfara is a peculiar case. The issues we have in Nigeria, you have issues of terrorism. What is described in Zamfara State is even similar to an insurgency. I heard the, local, the commissioner saying there are five local governments that they've lost control of. That's more like an insurgency. And so it is not something that the citizens will just wake up, harm themselves, and combat. It has to be done legitimately using legitimate law enforcement agencies. And, you know, this idea of um, establishing state security hard feet, I, I really don't buy into it because I happen to have worked in a place where they face issues of militancy and the then governor in that state took an action to assess the police. You can actually, the fund you're going to invest in buying this you know, weapons for these people, you can invest it in the police. You can offer security training to the police. You can offer logistic support to the police and the military and other, and help them to combat. What you use the local citizens to do is to procure intelligence, to show them the way, to give them neighborhood and, you know, local um, knowledge, local understanding of their terrains and all that. It will help. But you see, 
When we get everybody to acquire weapons at this point in time, what happens afterwards? I'm aware of communities where what they're doing now is they're buying weapons to protect themselves. Yes, somebody is going to serve as an armorer. Somebody is going to stockpile these weapons and keep. When this problem is over, what will happen? Because we need to be careful not to try to solve one problem today and create another one tomorrow. But I think that's what we'll be, we're about to do. That's one of the parts of creating multiple problems for this country right. that we don't know where it's going to end. So we'll get the commissioner to respond to some of these in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Mr. Dosara, uh, some of the concerns raised there, uh, I'm sure you heard from Mr. Gusso and Honorable Adejura, who themselves also have uh, concerns which they have raised. But in addition to the response that you may want to give to what they've said, for those who think that this is a desperate move on the part of the state government and that it's not well thought out, because they wonder, yes, you say you're not giving guns to just anybody, you want those who are qualified to get the guns. And they also want that, even at that, looking at the framework, for instance, there will always be chances that someone might misuse their firearm, whether or not they legitimately got it. We see that happen several times in different areas. Things like the measures to investigate and find out people are properly policed, they don't misuse all of those. That framework is not in place. So that's why some other persons think we may just have a challenge with quote and unquote qualified people getting access to guns. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, even though there was an uh, interruption, I couldn't get most of the questions you asked. But uh, like you said, response to uh, people who spoke earlier, uh, Mr. Busso has said that. Uh, people have no money to buy uh, the weapons we are trying to um, help them to buy. You see, we didn't say everybody in the state must buy gun or weapons. What we said is people who could afford, people who have interest to provide those weapons that are legitimately uh, allowed to defend themselves. That's what we said. We didn't say everybody, every Zampara person must get a gun or must get weapons to defend themselves. We say those who could afford and those who have interest. Uh, it is not by force. And two, he was asking of uh, whether we, we should have a, a strong uh, uh, force uh, comprising uh, a kind of uh, legion. We have this structure on ground. We have recruited, like I said earlier, 300 uh, persons that we, we, we gave nomenclature as community protection guards. And these people have been working. 300 uh, were recruited in each of the 19 Emirate councils of the state. And uh, yesterday, His Excellency ordered for a recruitment of additional 200 persons to join the community protection guards. And that's why I said, if Busau is not politicizing the security, uh, we challenge him to come and be the commandant general of this force we have established. It, it, it is comprising of uh, including retired commissioners of police, retired captains in the military, and they are working and we are preparing them. They are working with the security agencies in Zampara State and they were given training on uh, weaponry handling, uh, human right uh, uh, concerns, and every other uh, issues that has to do with the protection of lives and property. Mm. So if Uso is not politicizing the issues, we challenge him to come and be commandant general of that force okay. so that he can help them for the people uh, secure uh, lives and property. Well, and, Mr. Sarah, uh, just just on, on still talking about uh, Mr. Gusso, one of the things that he said earlier, you know, we spitted the question the other time, but I'd like you to address it squarely. Uh, Chimelin asked you earlier, what if some go rogue? Now, 
As you said earlier, there have been attempts by the state government to engage the bandits to desist from what they are doing. What happened to that agreement? What happened to that conversation? What made that effort of government fail? And what is it that makes you so sure that these bandits that you want to attack through the citizens will not buy over some of the citizens that you are arming or empowering to arm themselves against these bandits? What happened to that conversation about them down in tools? Maybe, maybe you couldn't listen when I said Zamfara State was nine months period without an incident of insecurity uh, because of that dialogue process. But the issue of conflict interpreneurs, and conflict interpreneurs are found in almost all the sectors, including the security, including the politicians, including the even journalists, people who get what from the crisis. So they total that success we had initially. And the government, the, 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 the government under the leadership of His Excellency, not relent in its efforts. We came up with another solution, which was shutting down the networks. I made this explanation earlier. Well, uh, so uh, Mr. Dasara, uh, have you when, then been able to engage these conflict entrepreneurs as you previously engaged the bandits, so that they can desist from this act? Well, do, do you know them? The issue is, do you know them? Somebody who's trying to sabotage you, you can't know them. You can't know. So what we did was we try as much as possible to give, uh, to give ultimatum to the bandits. And after which, we again engage them in another way by confronting them through shutting down the networks and uh, closing down markets and uh, restricting vehicular movement, which has seriously incapacitated the bandits. And that has brought a lot of success in the fight against the bandits. So uh, you can see the government is not relenting. It's trying so many ways, very hard, to ensure that uh, the number of people are protected. The concerns of the government is how do we protect our people? Mm. How well, do we uh, save lives and property of the people? That is what we are trying to do. Well, um, Honorable Commissioner, there is a saying, an African saying, that it's only the thief that knows how to find another thief's path on a rock. And I'm wondering if, you know, the bandits whom governments, the state government succeeded with previously, could be useful in finding these people that who you said you don't know cannot be found. Has, has there been such an effort? What did it produce? Well, what we engage those people who surrendered is to help us to skill kidnap victims. And um, the Ampara state government is well known and should be appraised for its efforts in securing kidnapped victims. Not only people from the Ampara state, even in other states, uh, His Excellency has helped in securing the release of uh, abducted uh, persons. So uh, that is how we utilize the bandits who have surrendered, who joined the dialogue and respected. Like I told you, some uh, were, were, were made to, uh, I mean, disrespect the dialogue through the conflict entrepreneurs, which I said we don't know. And, uh, we are asking whoever knows people who are sabotaging us uh, should do so. And but, that but, is but why... Commissioner, how did you know that they are conflict entrepreneurs? Sorry? How did the government know that they are conflict entrepreneurs? Yeah, of course. The people who uh, make a lot of gains out of the crisis. Let me give you examples. There are people who take... Uh, uh, food stuff to the bandits in the forest. There are people who supply them with the drinks, alcohol, and drugs. There are people who supply them with petroleum. There are people who also uh, supply them even with women. So these are the conflict entrepreneurs we are talking about. And we have the informants 
who always tell them, uh, go to social community, there are a lot of uh, money there, or there are a lot of uh, uh, cartoons. So these are the conflict entrepreneurs we are talking about, and uh, many of them engage in sabotaging the efforts of the government in succeeding uh, in the fight against but, You know, listening like to some of those analyses you've given, identifying some key things that people do for these bandits, many will then ask, wait a minute, if you, if you have those very, very key details, you should have one or two people who will be arrested who knows that these people do this for these other bandits. Doesn't government yeah, know it, any one of them whatsoever? If, if you have been following uh, our statements uh, in the past, we said we make so many arrests and many people are undergoing uh, judicial uh, So that means you know that. They're known. So, so, so... Uh, yeah, it, it was because you said they were not known. So many just wondered that, but wait a minute, some are in custody, so they should know. Some of these things, you have to keep them uh, in secret. Okay. It's not everything you discuss about security on media organizations. We understand so, that. We understand. Yeah, so, but, but when you say you don't know, it gives a blanket uh, suggestion that nothing is known or people have not been arrested. So just wanted to clarify that bit. But that's why I do nothing you have to discuss on security, I mean, about security on media. <laughs> well, Commissioner, um, you know, the police say they don't have any of such communication from the Zamfara states. Have they been informed concerning this directive to procure arms? I didn't say we have already communicated to them. What we said is that we prepared forms and sent to the uh, Emirates, where the traditional rulers, the, uh, the locals, will do the, the background checking and allow those who have interest to fill the form from where we take it and send to the uh, police. So this is what we said. Okay. We, we didn't think we have communicated to the police about this. What we said, this is a process we have put in place and we have started the process and we are moving uh, towards uh, ensuring that we are successful. Well, in what uh, we have Honorable planned. Commissioner, some of the analysis that you, know, you made the other time uh, points to one thing. And there are those who believe that the reason, part of the reason, a fundamental reason we have a high level of insecurity in the country is because some governors do not allow the local government systems to function efficiently. All insecurity is local and that references the local government system significantly. What is the body language of Zamfara State, the Zamfara State government, in empowering the local government systems to run as the government that they ought to be, in order to be the first line of defense to checkmate this banditry? In the first place, I don't even believe that uh, um, uh, governors uh, are responsible for the, the insecurity. You see, let us understand the basic and fundamental issues about security in Nigeria. One, we have paucity of funds across the states. Two, we have shortage of manpower among the security personnel. Three, we have diversity of insecurity across the nation, so much that the little manpower we have in the security sector cannot cope with this. And uh, sadly, uh, like I told you, I am still uh, repeating that we have large number of conflict entrepreneurs, uh, even including... Mr. Dasara, the question is around the local government system in uh, Zamfara State. I think, I think you have, you ask question, uh, the, you have, you ask twin questions. And this is the first question I'm talking to you, that even... Outside Nigeria, we have conflict entrepreneurs, those who supply weapons to Nigerians, and they will never like to have Nigeria have peace. So understand this factor. Secondly, uh, the local government uh, uh, system uh, you are talking about, in Zamfara State, we have all it takes to put the local government function, function effectively. We have committees, 
We have uh, uh, security meetings all over, and we, we give them funds that they use to uh, ensure that they provide security within the localities. We have a network of systems which, like I said, we cannot just be sitting down on, on media and start talking about because it has to do with the security. So it is not what people are accusing uh, the governor or government in this regard. Well, Mr. Dosara, well, part, of the, part of the answer that I was just hoping, some perspectives that I'm hoping to get, you know, from this is concerning this whole conversation around local government autonomy and all of that, because the local government systems get money, should get money directly from the federal allocation straight into their coffers. Now, that speaks to the uh, proposed uh, local government autonomy, financial autonomy, and administrative autonomy. That I also believe, and perhaps by the wisdom of the National Assembly, that if the local governments have administrative and financial autonomy, they would be able to take some proactive measures that the state government will only support. They would be at the forefront of ensuring security in their own localities, using the, the traditional institutions that you also referenced the other time directly. It's worked in Nigeria before. Is it something that the state government is, is willing and expecting, expecting to support the House of Assembly in doing, ensuring an autonomous administrative, administrative and financial autonomy for the local government in Zamfara State? Well, you see, uh, what we have in Zamfara State is a common understanding between the local governments and the state government. We have uh, so many demands in terms of infrastructure across the local governments. And what we do is to sit down at the end of the month and look at what resources we have and what other demands do we have from the local governments. And uh, we um, go by the budget, the provision, and uh, establish those structures and infrastructures that are being demanded by the people in the localities. So um, we, we have a clean system here. We, we are not just uh, depriving the local governments from using their funds to do what they want. And we allow them to bring what their people are requiring, the most fundamental, and we look at them. Like we said, security is one of them, and we have been doing... So, Commissioner, uh, we need to bring other people, but just quickly, how do you think this will work? Because you, no matter the forms and the licenses they give, they cannot get beyond the dang gun. These bandits or entrepreneurs, as you say, some of them use AK-47, AK-49. How can the dang gun face an AK-47? It's like taking a knife to a gunfight. You see, um, there is what we call uh, psychological warfare. When I said, okay, um, Chamberlain is having a gun in his house, I would be afraid to just come to Chamberlain's house to attack him because I don't know the type of gun he's having. We didn't say these are the type of weapons we are providing for the people, but what we are doing is to try as well create psychological warfare among the bandits. Let's um, get across to the former AIG of police to get his quick perspective, Mr. Wilson Naligo. He joins us uh, uh, via phone this morning. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. You heard all that's been said about getting legitimate or qualified people in Zamfara to get guns, and they will apply to the police. What do you think of this? First of all, it's a pleasure for me to join you. Well, uh, I, I can understand the situation that people of Zamfara still face uh, because of the rampaging bandits. But I think, uh, I don't know what uh, impact uh, I mean, citizens, almost 9,500 in the 19 Emirates can add to the security situation in Zamfara State. Uh, particularly that, since 2007, I'm not aware that any commission of police has issued any firearm. Uh, 
uh, I'm not aware that any commissioner of police has issued any firearm license because since there was an there is an embargo, uh, even as commissioner of police in three states, I I, I don't remember signing any firearm. Most why? It is, yeah, it is uh, because I think since 2007, if my not uh, if I'm correct, uh, we've not uh, been issuing the. Uh, granting firearm licenses. Even the one that we grant is for gaming, for hunting, not for self-defense. And uh, I'm not, I don't think the law makes the firearms at least provision for governor to give order for citizens or to commission our police to grant firearm licenses. I think that is within the president through the IG. Right. Uh, so if uh, we have the automatic rifle, uh, firearms, but uh, for gaming, which is uh, the double barrel shotgun. The Inspector General of Police has given that uh, order to uh, to commissioners of police. But since 2007, I am aware that uh, fresh licenses are not being granted. Uh, I don't know if there, uh, there is any development. Okay. So I don't. Uh, uh, if the commissioner of police, uh, uh, if uh, some of us were commissioners of police, right from. Time, even from some 2007, no license have been yeah, granted. Yeah, but, but Mr. Nalego, you've got your point, but does that mean that it cannot be granted now because the, the government of Zamfara State says they are talking with the president and with the IGP that this is desperate times and things need to change? Yeah, I, I recognize that these are desperate times. But like I told you earlier, and you have also reemphasized that, that is the president through the Inspector General Police. So if the governor has uh, uh, applied to the president and given uh, some names uh, and proper background check has been carried out, then the IG may direct the Commissioner of Police, Zamfara State, to grant licenses to such persons. Okay, but, but be, be, the, since 2007, I, I don't has the force been faced with this kind of scenario wherein the state says, yes, we want people who are qualified to get arms? Oh, take that again, sorry. You say since 2007, no license has been issued. And I'm asking... No, I, I, don't, I, I, I was commissioner of police for 2014 in the FCT and other places. I, ha I did not sign any... Yeah, I'm asking, what since I, that time, receive, or yes. while you were in service, yes. did you face a scenario such as this, Zamfara State request or directive? No. No, I am not saying that the, the that uh, the governor shouldn't have made a request. I am saying, in terms of process, in terms of procedure, okay. that the unless the president has granted approval, and then through the inspector general police, because the president approves, especially okay. if it is for uh, automatic firearm, but if it is double barrel shotgun, yeah, which is not self-loading then the IG can direct the commissioner of police. But at, to the best of my knowledge, the ban on issuance of firearm license, especially for gaming, I am not sure that that ban has been lifted. But right. you can check on that. But, and then, like, the point I want to make again is, I know that it is only the president that can grant license for any citizen to bear automatic firearm. But for gaming, double barrel shotgun, the IG through the commissioners of police of the respective states. But there has been a ban because to cop prolific proliferation of firearm and everything should be done to take weapons from uh, non-state actors that possess such arms illegally. Because that is also the reason. Because if, if for example, the Commission of Police can only grant license for firearms for gaming or for hunting. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that can confront people who are armed with RPGs, rocket pumped grenades, GPMG, uh, AK-47. But I think uh, I, I read through the document that the Forest State Government prepared, and uh, the number two, getting intelligence and all this. So I, I think, but if because I don't know if that can improve the security situation. When you have about 9,000, what training are you going to give them? 
how right. long is their training going to take? How are you going to uh, check their biometrics uh, for 9,500 people to sh be sure that they've not been involved in any violence, either uh, armed robbery, kidnapping, and all that? It's a huge job. But I think the process is from this president to the IG who will instruct the respective commissioner of police. But I don't know if the inspector general of police has lifted the ban. Okay. All right, Mr. Nalugu, we, we appreciate your points this morning. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your time as well. Thank you. Okay, so part, part of the, um, I guess, the uh, hopefully the uh, commissioner may also respond to that. But before that, we need to get to Abuja. Who knows? Uh, what can there be? A copycat directive from some other states in the country. How would that be handled? Let's get to Abuja. Mark. Well, big questions, Chamberlain. But let me ask um, Barista Ibrahim Jibril Goso okay. um, about the situation we currently have on our hands. Some people will say that it is tough enough to warrant that you know people be asked to get arms to protect themselves. You don't agree? <laughs> Thank you very much, Maupe. I, I don't agree. When you look at a state like Zamfara, the state has a lot of problem in its hand already. When you look at uh, the level of illiteracy, will you, um, will you give arms to illiterates who doesn't understand how to use it? Will you give arm to illiterate who doesn't understand how to use it? Yes. The answer is no. So, um, Honorable Adejari has talked about how the situation in Zamfara is peculiar. Um, and may, maybe this is a, a knee-jerk reaction. I mean, even for him who has advocated that citizens be allowed to bear arms, um, he, he thinks that, you know, Zamfara, I, and I... You're here, so I hope I'm not misrepresenting uh, your ideas, but I think that you're saying that the, you know, the situation in Zamfara is a little different, uh, and so maybe it should be you know, examined a little further. But for ordinary citizens, I mean, almost every day right now, a lot of Nigerians are living in fear. I mean, just here in the federal capital territory, we understand that four farmers were killed over the weekend, and over 20 of them kidnapped in their farms right here in the FCT. People in Niger State, I think it was at the beginning of this year, we're told that over 200 people died in less than three weeks, and many more were kidnapped. So people have been living in, you know, in fear um, in different parts of the country. You do not think that it is time that indeed uh, maybe this this uh, situation concerning arms and ammunition be liberalized and those who can protect themselves, let them get the guns and protect themselves. You don't agree? I don't agree. It is, this shows the failure on the part of the government. Just recently, United so States in, of America... So let us, let us, <laughs> I, and I, I hate to say this, but if that is the situation, if government has failed, because if people are dying on a daily basis, there are questions as to the capacity of government. Isn't that correct? You're, you're right. So if you, as a, a citizen, know that you can get a gun to protect yourself, you wouldn't take the option? Well, I, 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 I don't think taking the option is, a pro, is the solution. Because when you take the option, when you, whenever, you want to, whenever the government or you want to do anything, you should, you, should, you should think about the consequence of what you are going to do. If every Nigerians are allowed to arm themselves, mm -hmm. I'm, I, 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 I'm afraid to say the state, the country, will be plunged into a lot of insecurities, crises, and here and, here and there. Is this any worse than what we're already in? Is it is a crisis that we're... It will be worse than this. I'm sorry to use the word. It will be worse than what this. What do you foresee happening? Because what they're saying is that citizens who have the means... I, who have the temperament, who have been psychologically checked, uh, uh, and who have shown themselves to be responsible citizens of society, should be allowed to own uh, weapons. I mean, right now, if you go to our different homes, I'm sure we've all put measures in place to protect ourselves. Some measures, you know, put in place, which we did not have many years ago. Uh, so if a gun is one of the latest measures, why would you say that citizens should not be allowed to have that? Nigeria will belong into what, what I, I term as Gorilla Republic. 
just like what is happening in Libya. When you go to Libya, you can, you can purchase arms on the street. Most of the most of the progression no, of arms. Libya is a have, different situation because there that is, is, that is, there is no is government in Libya. Into. There will be there is no government in Libya. Let's take an example of the United States uh, today. Good. Good. Yes, they have their issues with guns, but citizens are allowed to procure weapons to protect themselves. Uh, it's it's a right protected by law. Uh, in fact, the Constitution of the United of the States. United States very... So if that is the situation, um, uh, what they say is that this is about deterrence. You don't just go to somebody's house anyhow to go and attack the person or, you know, you, you, there is some, uh, so there's some level of deterrence. And this is where you even have the police responding effectively like that. There is still that level of protection at the personal level. What's wrong with that for Nigeria? Nigeria is not the United States of America. When you look at our level of advancement, it's different. That is one. Two, even in the United States of America where it is allowed, it, the whole thing is, is getting out of hand. And the government now has to promulgate a law on gun control. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it very well, you cannot compare the system in America with Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is faced with a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. Ethnic, religion. Even regional, even states. Mm -hmm. You go to some state, they will tell you you are, un you are not an ind indigenous of this state. You should move back to your state. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of diversity in Nigeria mm -hmm. that could lead to anarchy, lawlessness. We're already battling with lawlessness in Nigeria from all facets. The security, the people, the government, mm -hmm. they are... We are already battling with insecurity. But for, if you add that to the problem in Nigeria, I'm sorry to say, the country will be plunged into war. Have you taken a look at that, Honorable? Um, have, you, have you thought about that, the, the fact that, you know, he, he said Nigeria is not the United States. I was tempted to say that, but we copy, we try to copy the United States. But he's also listed very seriously uh, the fact that, you know, there are so many points of conflict within our country. And that right now, you know, we seem to be in a flux, in a state of flux, and that, you know, the, the, the too many potential for conflict could actually aggravate things and maybe prevent reason from prevailing. Um, is this something you've thought about, even, even as you ask uh, that we consider this third option of allowing citizens, you know, be able to bear arms, you know, who have gone through a s series of regulations and tests. Well, thank you. Um, I'm glad that um, he's a lawyer. All I ask, all I would ask of him is to read the um, Fire Hamza, Act, Cap 28 Law Federation of Nigeria, and you'll see that we actually do have a law in Nigeria that allows citizens to bear weapons. It's there. So it's not a new regulation. What's been done is that this law has been operated arbitrarily. Like you heard that the AIG analogous said that the AIG suspended issuance. The AIG, I mean, the AIG does not have the power to suspend any law in Nigeria. So it's sure. that kind of arbitrary name that we're trying to, to eliminate. People have rights. Now, we, we, we tend to deceive ourselves as well. Do people obtain weapons now, illegitimately? They do, every day. You see, the people who are attacking, who are involved in criminality, banditry, terrorism, and all that, they acquire weapons. They buy them on the streets. The weapons are available. Now, the only reason people who are law-abiding are not buying is because they're law-abiding. They do not want to obtain it illegally. So what we're saying now is this. Give these people who are obeying the law a right to self-defense. At the same time, make the acquisition of illegit you know, illegitimate weapons more difficult so that you make the punishment for illegal acquisition more stringent. Can you argue with that? Can you argue with that? I mean, when he says give those, because as he says, as he argues, the, on the black market, the weapons are there. Those who are breaking the laws, the kidnappers, the armed robbers, the bandits, they're purchasing them. It says the good people who are, you know, still law-abiding. Give the good people who are law-abiding a means to be able to purchase these weapons. Can you argue with that? Well, whose responsibility is it to strengthen the law? I think the government. If the government is not strengthening our laws that need to, in quote, protect us, then who, the government has failed. Thank God we practice democracy. Nigerians should come together and ensure 
we have proper leaders who can, who have the political will to in, enforce some of our laws. We're talking about, he's, he, the Honorable just talked about illegal acquisition of firearms. Mm -hmm. What is the government doing to curb the menace? Big question, Honorable. In a society where government hasn't done much to curb the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, and we accept that it is a problem that we're all facing, can we really say that we, we want more arms to solve the problem of proliferation of arms? What we have, we have proliferation of illegitimate weapons, of illicit weapons, not proliferation of legitimate weapons. They're two different things. And um, you see, we tend to concentrate more on punishing the law-abiding citizens and leaving the whole environment free for the criminals. I don't know that when you put a gun here and another gun here, one is going to say it's legitimate, the other is going to be discriminated. They're both going to be weapons. No, I, mean, I mean, I still refer to what AIG in Alago said, yeah. that Inspector General of Police has suspended issuance of licenses since 2007. Yeah, but the problem, what we're saying is that there is still a proliferation, nonetheless. There is still, the black market is still flourishing, nonetheless. So will the solution to the black market flourishing be to now make sure that the market is bigger? No. The solution to that is enforcement. I mean, um, the uh, Small and Light Weapons Center has been established at the Office of National Security Ad Advisor. So that process is ongoing. And the whole idea is that for use this agency, because first we ret we've ratified the ECOWAS Treaty that provides for that, and then we're trying to at least create an environment where these weapons, illicit weapons, could be, pro you know, recover from, you know, wherever they are, and then at least reduce the number in circulation. Well, that see? process is ongoing how the process eventually evolves, but we have to thank you gentlemen for coming on this morning. Barista Ibrahim Jibril Gusto is a member of the PDP. Thank you. And thank also you for having me. Uh, from Zamfara State, thank you so much for coming to share your thoughts. Honorable Adejuru Adeogun is a deputy chair, House Committee on National Security and Intelligence. Thank you as well for Thanks coming on this me. morning. Over now to you, Chamberlain. Well, yes, indeed. We also have to uh, thank uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Information in Zamfara State, and uh, we wish the state all the best. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Chamberlain.